Hello, Mayday family. How are you doing today? For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is May. I'm a licensed counselor with a YouTube channel. So today, <laughs> today I'm going to do a therapist reaction video to the Your Average at Best video, full interview. Uh, full disclosure, I have not watched this video yet. I wanted to wait to watch the video because I wanted to watch the video with you. So, <laughs> but I've seen bits and pieces of the video because it just so happened to come across my feed when I was on YouTube. So I've seen bits and pieces and I actually watched a review, a different review on it. And that's what picked my in interest to actually come on and watch it. But I mean, just by the review alone, it just looks like such an entertaining <laughs> interview. Uh, you know, I love it. I mean, it's by Kevin Samuels. If you guys don't know who that is, I mean, he has a pretty large following. He essentially talks to women and I suppose tries to give them advice. Anyways. Those were hers. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, are you a PhD? Ah, uh, no. I'm a PhD. How many dollars you got? Uh, one. Really? Okay, so the episode just started and I'm cracking up already. I mean, his face, you know why he's making that face? You, you guys, he's making that face because he's... <laughs> he, he probably feels like if you know you're going to call in to try and talk to me and ask for advice or whatever you wanted to talk about, you would think that you'd make sure that you're in a setting where you can talk and it's quiet and you don't have like your bark, your dogs barking in the background and things like that. So he kind of looks a little appalled at the audacity, I guess. <laughs> so what he's doing as far as like asking if he's a PhD, I don't, I'm not sure why that was the first place he went to, but I think the reason why that was the first place he went to was because of the fact that she had her dogs barking in the background. She did not plan for something that she could have planned for. She is the one that called in. He didn't call her. And so he's he's m trying to match up, I guess, her intelligence with this initial impression that he just got. That's all I can think of. It's just so funny to see his reaction on that. I mean, so Kevin Samuels is a, is an older guy and a lot of his views I don't necessarily agree with so I don't watch a ton of his stuff but some some of his stuff I do watch and some of it is really funny because he's he's funny but some of it is just the delivery and he knows because his platform is largely based on the way he delivers his message <laughs> But this was funny just to see his reaction. And he has the, like, is he promoting Red Bull or like, I feel like, is that a promotion? I don't know. Anyways, let's keep going. I'm sorry? What kind of dog is he? He's a cane corso. So I own a business. Okay, so I do too. And I do have a question. You but know. I have a business. And if you wanted my advice, you could always book a session. If you can't catch us at the show live. I'm definitely, I was trying to go online um, earlier. But, it, but all you have to do, man, let's see, what kind of business do you own? I own a pet grooming, doggy daycare, and you know, Okay, so on. what you're basically trying to do is I have a disagreement day. And you basically came in and said, damn your topic. I want to ask you what I want to ask. And okay. that's but you are more than welcome to go on my website and purchase your time to talk with me one-on-one. -on -one. 
So I do agree with him. So what happened here essentially is this lady called into his segment, which is supposed to be like a disagreement segment. From what I'm understanding based on context so far, he has his listeners call in, listeners that disagree with him. And so he essentially uh, argues his case and they argue their case. And this is the type of segment that this is. And so he is asking her, why are you calling in if you're not calling in for like that specific segment, if you don't have a disagreement to talk about? If you're wanting to just talk to me and you have questions, I have a business for that. You're supposed to call into the business. And she and her response is, well, you know, I know, but I'm usually asleep during that time or something really stupid like that. <laughs> so, you know, so he's, his face is just like, uh, like, cause he was, uh, he already started out with a bad impression of this person, I guess. So he's already like even more appalled. However, he's smart because he's using this to further promote his business. And so you can see that he is kind of being really specific about, oh, you can call and then we can set up a time. So he's using this to further promote his business in the moment. So that's, a, I mean, that's a guy that's probably been in business for a while. <laughs> he, he took it and, and just tried to flip it to his advantage there. So I don't, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know why he would be too upset, but let's keep going. Let's see what happens. This is super en entertaining thus far. How old, okay. are you? How old are you? I'm 35. 35 years old. 35 years old and you're a business owner. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And what's your question? Um, so uh, my issue is, well, I want to know at what point when I'm just meeting a guy, do I tell him that I'm a business owner? Because um, my problem is that when I try to break down and I, the conversation comes up to where I own a business, um, the guy is either like, hey, can I come join in on you on that business? Or... Can I put them in and be a business partner? And I'm not looking for that. And I honestly. Oh, 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 I need to be clear on this subject. So the first question that comes to my mind is <sighs> the first question that comes to my mind is why is that? A, why is this a problem? You know, this isn't, this doesn't seem like a legitimate problem. I kind of, now I'm starting to question and wonder why she called in in the first place. Like, is she just trying to be on camera? Like, I, because if someone, if you go out on a date with someone and they start trying to uh, get involved with your business because the conversation came up and you told them you own a business and now they want to get involved and this and that, then it stands to reason from what I would think that you just tell them, no, I am okay. I am not looking to run a business with anybody else. I'm good. Like, I mean, I just don't see why that's an issue. Like if you're running into that a lot, then just say no each time you it comes up or um, stop talking to them. If it's not what you're uh, looking for, if they continue to be pushy, if it's not a good fit, whatever, then stop talking to them. I just don't feel like it's enough of an issue to call this guy and almost like waste his time with that. Cause I just, I don't, I just don't know, but let's see what else comes up. Maybe, maybe, you know, more will come up as we go along that will help us make more sense of this, right? So let's see. You're saying when to tell somebody you own a business? Because, um, I find when I date down, guys see an interest and want to be like a business partner. And um, I'm learning that maybe I need a high value man because that's what Well, I'm first off, um, ma'am, I really don't understand. Uh, what kind of man are you talking about? Because um, owning a business is no different than having a job in my opinion. So I'm not getting I agree with him in that I'm also confused because like I said 
I don't really see this as an issue. I feel like, I mean, if you're running into guys that keep wanting to join in on your business, then just keep saying, no, thanks. I'm not interested. I like, I just, I'm just not seeing this as a big enough issue for you to call in. And I'm just starting to feel really uncomfortable with her calling in because I feel like she has ulterior motives and just like confused along with him. I do not agree with him, however, that owning a business is just like a job. Like, who says that? That's so ridiculous. That's like the most ridiculous thing to say. Owning a job is very different from owning a business. I mean, owning a business, you typically will be putting in more work and more hours. Sure. Um, but it's, it's something that you own. When you own, when you, when you have a job, you don't own that job. You know what I'm saying? Like there, that's a massive difference. So I think it was kind of silly to say or make the remark that owning a job is just like owning a business. It's like, yeah, that was ridiculous. That was a ridiculous statement. Anyways, let's keep going. I try to give, I try to give guys that not you. No, you try to do what? I try to give guys that's not on my level a chance. Why? What do you mean on your level? What does that mean? That's making six figures or more. But I don't under, okay. You try to give guys who are not on your level a chance. Why? And I'm, cause I want, I honestly want a six figure guy, uh, is what I'm realizing. Okay, yeah. so let me just go ahead and net it out for you. You ready? Uh-huh. The guys you want aren't asking you out. <laughs> okay, so first of all, she didn't answer the question. So she said, I try to give guys that are not on my level a chance. He said, why? She said, I'm honestly wanting a six figure guy the hell like that was not the answer to the question that like how did it break communication breakdown <laughs> okay so that's the first breakdown in communication that uh that really threw me off because that was not the answer to the question but nonetheless so his response is, well, the guys that you want aren't, aren't asking you out. And I'm thinking, well, how do you know? Like, you haven't asked enough questions to jump to that conclusion. As, you know what I'm saying? Like, it could be that maybe she doesn't even know those guys to begin with or hasn't met enough of them. Or, you know, so I feel like I, I'm not understanding what's going on in this segment communication-wise, but... It's really choppy, in my opinion. But you put yourself out there enough for the guys you don't want or relief you to ask you out. Those are like guys I met online. Right. Um, so, again, the men you want are not asking you out. See, you ladies do this. You go and deal with men who you feel are beneath you, and then you ask how to fix them. I'm not beneath you. I don't know how to fix a guy that doesn't just down there. That's not my concern. Well, I, you know, he has, he has, there's a challenge that I'm noticing here. He's not, he's not very good at listening. <laughs> at least in this case scenario, the question that she had wasn't whether or not or how do we, I go about fixing this guy? That wasn't her question. Her, her concern sounds to me like she's saying she doesn't want to date those type of guys anymore. She wants to date a six-figure guy. She wants to date six-figure guys or whatever. So my question to that would be, okay, well, what's stopping you from doing that from your perspective he, he is responding to nothing like so he's just not he's not listening to the question first of all and he's responding to something imaginary I don't know where his response is coming from like so he's saying I'm not 
a guy that's below your level. So I can't tell you how to fix them. And I'm like, I haven't heard her ask you for advice on how to fix that. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, but what is going on? Like, I'm going to have to do more reviews on the videos that he does. If every single one of them is like this, it's just going to be so entertaining to, <laughs> to see. But okay, well, let's see where this goes because now I'm curious to see what road or path this is going to take because they're not on the same page. They're both talking about completely different things so well first of all i would tell you what i said in here automatically is a problem why you would come onto a show that you know is a disagreement it's selfish it's like well I, yes ma'am it's so it's like <laughs> all right so you know what's so funny to me is that he like he just can't let it go <laughs> He can't get over the fact that this lady came on a show on the wrong day, knowingly, you know, he just can't get over it. And I'm just sitting here like, okay, we addressed that at the beginning of the show. If you agreed to do the show anyway, get over it. <laughs> Sorry, but it's just like, why are we still talking about that? So that this is what that tells me. That tells me that this guy is really showing signs of being an individual that has a really hard time letting go of things. And so, for example, if you were to be want to be in a relationship with a person like this, you, you better be ready because that's going to be a very, very tough relationship to be in because he just has a hard time letting go of things. And not only that, he will make a lot of assumptions on what who you are, the type of person that you are on very little things, based on very little things. And so it's difficult to be in a relationship with this type of person or personality type, I should say, because they don't let go of things. So essentially one thing builds on another, builds on and another, and they're very quick with the assumption making and building of your, your character based on certain things or very little little data basically so it's just funny to me i'm like why are we going back to this like you agreed to do the show so what's the issue <laughs> I, now i'm starting to feel like he only agreed to do the show just to tear just to tear her up tear just to tear her up and teach her a lesson about calling in on the wrong day and doing that on purpose, you know. But anyways, let's see. Let's keep going. Business talk. That means you understand what business is. You know this is a business. And I have a and I have a show title. And you said, damn your show title. I want to talk to you. But you could have went to my business and booked time to talk to me. But you wanted what you wanted, how you wanted. I'm sorry. No, it's, but, the, and I'm using this as a lesson. That's the problem with too many of you black women. You don't do shit the right way with black men. That was improper. And when I, even when I told you the right way, you still were like, uh, well, whatever. Okay. So I think he's crossing as usual, a lot of lines, right? And it's like, he, first of all, this is an individual that's coming off to me as having an anger issue. I mean, seriously, she said, I'm sorry. What do you want her to slit her, her, her wrist? What is going on? You already addressed this at the beginning of the call and you agreed to take the call anyway. That's on you. Why are we still talking about that? And why are you yelling at her about that? That's not about, that's not the question that she asked. And that doesn't say anything about her core character. You can't make that assumption based on the fact that she called on the wrong day or whatever. This guy is out of control, you know, and he has an anger problem because to be so upset about this for so long, you know, that's all he's been thinking about this whole time. Probably wasn't even, that's why we've been seeing that breakdown in communication because he hasn't even been focused on trying to listen to what this lady is saying. I feel like if she said, I'm sorry, move on, you know, it's just ridiculous to me. Like, and then he goes on to say, this is the problem with too many of you black women. You don't do things right when it comes to black men. Like, excuse me? So what are you trying to say? Like black men do things right when it comes to black women? 
how do you go from zero to a hundred like that? This person has a lot of things that could be very well worked out in therapy because she called in on the wrong day. She said, I'm sorry. And you're still going on and on about it. It's like, dude, <laughs> move on, you know? And now all black women must be this way because, or must be this unwanted, uh, difficult person because of it. But you're difficult. You are so difficult. Move on. She said, I'm sorry. Move on. Move on. <laughs> Anyways, let's let's keep going. Let's see what else this guy's got to say. I think I think I might have had it with this video, but let's see. <laughs> and how long have you been making six figures or more? Um, the last three. Okay, why do you need a man making six figures? Um, because I'm finding out that the guy that I date that's not is not working out. What does it have to do with money? Because I feel like um, I need a guy that I can respect and admire, and I'm a dish invention, and I want a guy that has that drive too. And when he doesn't, I find myself, you know, encouraging him like, "Hey, babe, you can do this and you can do that." And then, All right, so in North Carolina, hey, so <laughs> she's tripping, right? Like, I don't understand. Okay. So she's equating being able to respect a man with how much the man makes, which I don't agree with that, right? However, I do agree with finding someone that has ambition. And it sounds like maybe what she needs to do is start asking the right questions and looking for the right things. She just needs a little, little twick as far as her perspective goes. So it's not that how much a man makes isn't directly linked to their ambition level. And so what she needs to start realizing is that what she's actually looking for is not a man that makes six figures. It's a man who has ambition and drive, like their own ambition and drive. So that way they're not wanting to basically feed off of your ambition and drive because that makes it to where you view them as individuals who lack ambition and drive. So I think that is really what she's looking for, but she's not quite clear on that herself yet. Like, She's still viewing it from a standpoint of, oh, well, I guess the common denominator has been how much they make. But that's not necessarily true. The common denominator is basically how you're going about picking this, these men. So the problem is more, more likely to be the perspective that she's coming from when she's going about picking the, these men. So instead of focusing so much on how much the men make, perhaps focus on trying to find out on the first, second, and third date, try to focus on whether or not these men have ambition, whether they have drive. Even before getting to a first date, it, it's kind of easy to try to find that out. So you don't waste your time even going on a first date in the first place if you know that that's something that really matters to you. And I think that's where the confusion is. Even for her, I think that it's just a matter of helping her clarify her own thoughts, basically. So let's see what uh, what else we've got here. You don't know them. You don't know what they want, but you want them. Ma'am, I'm going to suggest that you really don't know what you want. And saying six figures is just something that you get taken from out there, but I'm not hearing this rooted to anything. What do you want ultimately? Do you want to be married, children, what? I do agree with him on that. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Uh, it's really from what it looks like to me and what it sounds like, this is an individual that doesn't know what she wants. She's not clear on the core attributes that she's actually looking for. She's kind of 
she's com- she's a little bit confused, right? So she's misinterpreting one attribute for another, making one false link with another. And so she's just not clear on those things. And I don't, you know, it might just be, maybe she hasn't taken enough time to really think about that, <clears throat> which is pretty sad because she is 35 years old. So that's, you know, you want to be, you want to be in a place where you have that for the most part uh, figured out at that age, but it's okay. So um, go ahead and take this now, ma'am. Men who make the kind of money you're talking about have options. And typically they don't want to deal with women who are have 13 year old sons who are used to dating men. Who, this doesn't sound appealing to the kind of man you're talking about. You understand what I'm saying? So um, I don't, re- I don't, I don't really agree with him on that because human beings are just so different. It it makes no sense to try to categorize them in that in that way. But I do understand the point he's trying to make. So from what I'm getting, the point he's trying to make is that you know you want. a a guy that's on a higher level than you and guys that are on a higher level than you are not going to want you because you're not on the same level as they are. So ultimately I think that's the sentiment he's trying to portray. Do I agree with that? Not necessarily. Um, I think that it just depends on the individual, on the guy that you meet and what the guy ultimately is like and what the guy is looking for. I say that because I I could just as easily say men that make like six figure income or more are incapable of being faithful to their partners because they have too many options. And so they're always faced with temptation and they have the money and the the ability to to cheat and that's why most of them cheat and we can see an example of that with all the most famous people for example jay-z and beyonce everyone knows who jay-z and beyonce is and it's come to light that jay-z has cheated on beyonce multiple times and beyonce is not just whomever that's just on the street so i could easily make that assertion as well and uh to an extent i do believe that however you know, I wouldn't be comfortable enough to make such a generalized statement such as men on this level are not looking for you. (laughs) You know, it just depends. Men on that level are typically, you know, they just typically vary with what they're into. And so it really just depends. Now she does have a kid. Uh, I don't have a kid. So I, don't know that that would be a bad or a good thing but i do know that for example if the guy that she's checking for also has kids then there's no problem so you see what i'm saying like so that general statement makes no sense and he says that in a lot of his videos and a lot of his stuff and it just makes no sense however i think the sentiment the overall sentiment he's trying to say is that you want someone that's on a higher level than you yet you're on this level, you know, you need, what you need to be doing is checking for people that are on your level and not, not checking for people that are on a higher level, you know, and and I guess that's what he's saying, but I mean, do I agree with that? Not necessarily. I mean, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with wanting more and wanting better, you know, but the problem with this particular case and this particular individual is that she seems a little bit delusional to me. Not even delusional, but just confused. And, you know, you don't want to be that confused. And you also don't want to box yourself in because you're operating under false assumptions, right? So the first assumption she's operating under is that these guys, it's not working out with these guys because of how much they make. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not it. You know, it has to be more than that, right? So she has to do her homework to really find out, you know, what she wants, what's really behind this whole thing and things like that. 
Uh, unfortunately for her, it's not as easy as, oh, he doesn't make six figures and that's why. That's dumb, you know? So that's my thoughts. Those are my thoughts from just a, a, a human behavioral perspective. I feel like I'm the exception to the rule. But that's, that's the problem. You all think you're the exception to the rule, but, but your life is proven to you that you're not. My love life is not that good. I agree with you. That's I my point, and ma'am, and that's my point. You ladies all feel like, listen, you ladies all feel like you're the exception to the rule. And then when someone like myself comes along and gives you a, a dose of reality, instead of just accepting it, it's that, yeah, but, yeah, but I'm special. Okay, so I don't, I don't know why she feels like she's the exception to the rule. I mean, I, even I don't feel like I'm the exception to any rules. You know, I just do the best that I can on a daily basis and I continue to learn and grow. So I don't know where that mentality is coming from as far as feeling like she's the exception to the rule. However, I think there's a good chance that she said that because she was trying to defend herself because he's coming at her pretty hardcore. And human behavior dictates that when someone feels threatened like that, then they automatically one of the automatic responses that they could, it's fight or flight. One of the automatic responses that they could take is to try and defend themselves. And I think in her trying to defend herself, that came out as, oh, I feel like I'm the exception to the rule. And so, you know, it's just interesting. I, I, I don't think she's the exception to the rule. I, you know, uh, don't know why she feels that way. However, I mean, <laughs> I, it's not, I don't know why she, he's trying to crush her dreams. <laughs> I mean, he could just, I don't know. His whole show is based off of being this direct and aggressive. So it, you know, it is what it is. He's giving the public what, what the public wants. And that is the way he is. You can tell because he gets so frustrated. But um, the way he keeps making generalizations about Black women is astonishing to me. And I'm just like, uh... <laughs> What black women have you been hanging out with? <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know why she feels that way. I just, I feel like there's no reason to say that you're the exception to the rule unless you are already the exception to the rule. Does that make sense? Like if she were already married to someone that that makes six figures or more or a millionaire if she were already married to that person and when she married that person she had a kid and that person accepted her anyways and they've been married for some time that would make her the exception to the rule but you can't just say i'm the exception to the rule and that's not the positioning that you're that's not the position that you're in and so so that's how I view it. I, I, I think you can't just make such a blatant statement based on nothing factual. You, if you want to be the exception to the rule, then you actually have to be the exception to the rule. You can't just say, I'm the exception to the rule. And yet what we're talking about is you finding someone that's making, that's, that makes six figures or more and being married to that person but you don't have that. So you're not the exception to the rule. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, that's how I view that. Now, why he's generalizing that to all Black women, I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, that's how, that's how he gets his audience. So maybe that's why, but I just think it's silly to do that. The younger women are attracted to the older men. What are you talking about? <laughs> so can you see me? Yes, I can. Okay. So do you feel like a woman like me? Uh-huh. What would you rank yourself on a scale from one to 10? You cannot use seven. Would I rate myself? Mm -hmm. Just your face. Uh, my face is when I wake up, five, but when I put myself together, six. Okay. And how tall are you? Five, five. Your dress size. I'm sorry? Your dress size. A three. Okay. So that makes you, if you give yourself a five, that's average. Yeah. So average looking women tend not to get high earning men. Oh. men. They tend to get average men. 
So I call BS on that. I mean, I see uh, high earning men, financially high earning men with uh, average looking women per day. <laughs> it's like, it's almost like they prefer that, you know, because when you, when you, and I don't want to make a generalization, but from my experience, when you as a guy date a female that is extremely attractive, like a model and, and stuff like that. Like it takes some additional searching to get one with the looks and the personality. And so a lot of them will settle for an average looking, not even settle, but settle when it comes to looks for someone that has more personality wise. So I call BS on that, you know, uh, I'm shocked she rated herself a five just because even if she were actually a five, the fact that she rated herself that is so sad to me. I'm like, dang, like, dang. <laughs> you know, um, but, you know, it is what it is. My body is not average, so. But your, ma'am, you please don't make me say it. Say what? <laughs> okay, so she's not very bright. She's not the brightest crayon in the box if he said please don't make me say it then just be like okay why are you asking him say what now he's gonna go say it and, and your feelings are gonna be hurt if that were me i'd have been like okay don't say that <laughs> like i'm good because he's already telling you what he thinks and it's not it's not positive so you know well, why keep looking for more 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 of a beating right any woman who's older Average looking older woman with a 13 year old son. Average looking woman with a 13 year old son with a sketchy baby daddy. This get You guys, so we can see the dynamic has completely derailed here. She's now looking at her phone. She's kind of cut herself off and he just continues to talk because he doesn't want to allow himself to be phased by that. But we all know what he's thinking <laughs> with the kind of temper that he has. Um, I think from what I'm seeing and what I'm observing, the reason why she's probably doing this and she's picked up her phone is because she's uncomfortable with how he's coming at her. She's not feeling very good about herself right now, especially uh, a little self-conscious. And so she's chosen this reaction. It's almost like a coping mechanism. And it's not, I'm not, I'm not surprised because he's coming at her really hard, you know, and he's basically telling her she's ugly and she, like, she can't ever reach the goal that she wants or the dream that she wants, which, which I disagree with. There's a lot of guys that make a six figure income that date regular looking girls, a lot of regular looking guys, you know, and I just think it's, if you click with that person, you click with that person. If you're fortunate enough to meet someone that makes that that level of income and that person just so happens to be the person that you click with then that's what happens but I don't agree with him saying like you're you're not at that level maybe what he's trying to do is he's trying to get her to lower her expectations because to him it probably doesn't make sense that she's has such high expectations in the first place based on what she's bringing to the table. I think maybe that's where, that's where he's coming from, you know? So uh, it kind of goes back to that question, are you a PhD? You know, I'm a PhD student, but I would still be perplexed if someone just let in with that question. And there, I see the reasons why he probably did it, but he's so harsh in his delivery. He puts women in a very uncomfortable space. Now this looks like a nice lady and you know he's tearing her up <laughs> feels so bad for her i would i would never call into this show for advice there's no way i mean i get he would tear you up and there's no reason <laughs> there's no reason to do that to yourself you know but anyways well then you're gonna then you're gonna die alone how about that you, right, let me just cut to the chase man uh you can feel like what you want to but women like you die alone Straight up, because you think you're better than the men that you qualify for. And the only reason, honestly, ma'am, that I can see a woman like yourself really thinking you deserve more is because you earn more. 
because you earn more money than most people around you in North Carolina. I mean, if your ass worked at the post office, you would not think so highly of your opportunities. And that's the reality. We don't, men don't care about your money. Not the kind of men that you want. We don't care about your money. Oh my goodness. Did he just tell this lady she's going to die alone? <laughs> oh my gosh. Honestly, dying alone, like, is that the worst thing ever? You know, she has family. She has, so it shouldn't scare her. I don't think that he says, oh, you're going to die alone. You know, it's like, okay, I don't know why so many people place their worth, the entirety of their worth on being with someone else or being in a romantic relationship. It just makes no sense to, to do that. I think your happiness really has to come from within and you have to just focus on working on making sure that that is where it's coming from every day. But I'm so perplexed that he told this woman that she's going to die alone. Like his temper, he needs to work on his temper. <laughs> he's obviously frustrated because she keeps looking at her phone. I don't know why he's not bringing it up. It, you know, you typically you'd want to bring that be behavior up as soon as it happens in order to shut that behavior down immediately. He didn't do that. And so she's continuing to look at her phone. I would have brought it up as soon as I saw it. I'd have been like, hey, is there something that you're looking at your phone that's more important than this, than what we're talking about? Or something like that. Or why are you looking at your phone? Is there, what's the matter? I would have brought that up and shut it down right then and there. Instead of allowing it to happen and then pissing yourself off because you, you're continuing to allow this to happen. But I, you know, telling the lady that she's going to die alone, that's a little extreme, don't you think? <laughs> that's a little much. That's a little much. And then he goes on to repeat that women, that men that make that kind of, first of all, let me tell you guys, a six figure income is not that much money. <laughs> so I don't know why everyone is fighting over that. Six figure income is a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's good. It's it's great if you're able to accomplish that and keep growing from that. But why are we all acting like this is just so much? Like oh, we're talking about dating a millionaire, or you know what I mean? Like, and also as women, we really shouldn't be looking for men that make that kind of income. That shouldn't be our focus. Our focus should be, is this a good person? Is this a person with ambition, internal drive? Can we build a future together? That really should be the focus because honestly, it's harder to find those guys than it is to find men that make over $100,000 a year. And because she's putting, she's putting the emphasis on the money that this men make as far as what she's looking for, she is going to keep finding herself in a difficult position. But I don't think that he should have told her that she's going to die alone. I think that was too much for her because she has made it clear that she wants to be in a relationship. I think it was really mean of him to tell this woman that she's going to die alone. Why would you say that? <laughs> like, you know, I understand that she needs to reprioritize her values and maybe what she's looking for and just clarify those for herself. But that doesn't mean that she's going to die alone. I mean, she has a, she has a kid. You, what, like, does he want her to regret having her kid? I don't think he does, but the way he talks, you know, it, it's like, First of all, people that the guy men that make a six figure income that doesn't really what is what is that going to do for me if you make a six figure income? You know what I mean, like the type of guys that he's talking about, because he's he keeps saying these type of guys aren't looking for old women with kids. Those type of guys you need to really watch out for because if they're looking for young women with no kids. You have to ask yourself the question as a woman, why? What do you find appealing in me? Like, so are you look then are you looking for young women with no kids because they look good? So you're just looking for someone with good looks. 
Um, so you just have to like, it doesn't matter who you're dealing with. It's still the same amount of homework that you'll have to do. Sometimes more homework, <laughs> but you don't want to do less homework. You're an average person. I mean, let's be real. You're not running Microsoft. You got you had a pet grooming business. You've been making six figures for the last three years. Okay. <laughs> but if I'm looking at you, but if I looked at you, I took all that off of you, all the eyelashes and all the hair. What do you look like? I mean, I look the same. Like no, you don't. Because if you did, you wouldn't have all that on. I'm sorry? No, you don't. You don't look the same because if you did, you wouldn't have all that on. Uh, damn. <laughs> you know, I do try to encourage women to not, not overdo it with the makeup and stuff. But why is he judging this woman based on the fact that she has makeup and has her hair done? That is so harsh. That's so harsh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, it's hard. This is a tough one for me. You know why? Because most of the time I don't wear makeup. But that's just of a choice. That's because I don't necessarily have the time or the will to sit there and do it because I know how long it takes me to put it on. However, if I'm going out, night out, going out with my friends, and I want to feel cute, then I'll, I'll take the time to, to get dolled up and put on some makeup. If I'm making a YouTube video, as you can see, I don't bother with the makeup because I make a lot of videos. And if I did my makeup every time I made a video, it would take me forever. So this is a sticky one. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like she would look the same without makeup, but she probably wears makeup for the same reason most women wear makeup. I'm assuming for the same reason most women wear makeup, which is it makes them feel good. It makes them feel beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that. But I've been told whenever I wear makeup, I look the same as not wearing makeup. So what's the point of wearing makeup? So I get his point. But I still feel like she would probably look the same. Like, I don't feel like she would look that drastically different. But from his standpoint, also, there are some women that when you take off the makeup, it looks totally different from what you sold me last night. <laughs> So maybe that's the standpoint that he's coming from, Chad. I don't know. This is, you know, from but from a human behavioral standpoint, he, you know, women wear makeup because it, they feel like it's pretty, makes them look pretty. But uh, it's, it, it's a sticky one because I, I see his point. If, if you felt like you looked the same in it, then you wouldn't be wearing it. <laughs> I, that is an undeniable point. And that's an undeniably good point. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. All right, I'll tell you my advice, man, because you're not listening. That's why I always recommend you need to need to therapy. Everyone, people, most of us in the black community need therapy, but you're not you're not dealing with reality. I asked you about your child's father, and you couldn't answer. But it doesn't sound like you're too proud of him. How's it? What kind of student is your child? He's an A student. Kind of, does he have any behavioral problems? No, he actually got a YouTube channel and he's trying. I don't need that. I don't need none of this. No. But where is it? But his daddy is still. His... Well, um, I do agree with him in that she needs therapy, but I feel like he needs therapy as well. <laughs> they both need therapy. Uh, they, they both need a session or two, right? Um. I don't know that she, the issue. The issue with her is partially that she's not dealing with reality, but not in the sense that he's saying it. It's more of really getting to the core of the meaning of the things that she wants, as opposed to the surface level. I think she's surface level. And therapy would help her get to the core. For example, what you're looking for isn't necessarily someone that makes a six 
six-figure income. What you're looking for is someone that's ambitious. There's a difference. Just because someone makes a six-figure income does not mean that they are ambitious. <laughs> so I do agree that therapy would really, really help her. Also, you know, she keeps looking at her phone. She's clearly uncomfortable with the conversation. I think therapy would help her with that because that tells me that self-confidence wise, it's low. She has fairly low self-confidence and she also gets uncomfortable with challenging situations. And um, I think therapy would really help with, with those things. But for him to be like, asking about her kiddo. Like, what does he expect her to say? Does he expect her to say that he's super bad? You know, like, it's just dumb. Like, he's trying to prove his point, but he's just looking like a jerk, I feel like, as usual in his videos. He's just kind of coming off jerky. He knows that, but that's what, that is what his audience comes to watch. So that's what he gives. And I think that really is probably the way he is too in real life, but it is what it is on that. She's the one that she voluntarily called in. So, hey. <laughs> she sat down and asked herself, what value can I bring to a man? And I know that, what I can do. Well, all right. What can, what value, what, what is it? What is it? Mm -hmm. I can help him with his business. I'm very business minded on the um, end of helping organize and I plant. I know she didn't just say that dumb-ish. Didn't she at the beginning of this video say that she doesn't like it because men try to help her with her business and that's not what she wants? Look, what is she talking about? What is she, This is why I'm saying she's confused. She's confused. I, she's confused. She needs therapy. <laughs> this is a confused individual. And you know what? Ultimately, I have to agree with this man. Man, the men that you're looking for are probably not checking for you. And I'm not saying it because of where you are in life. I'm saying it because of what's happening in here. You're so confused. And unless you find, you luck out and find another confused individual who just so happens to make six figures a year, no one's looking at for you because you are just like all over the place. How in the world do you say that you don't want me these men that are supposedly below you because you make more, whatever, because they keep trying to help you with your business. And then he asks you, okay, what value do you bring to the table? And you say, I can help them with their business. The lady, 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 just stop the interview because he's making a fool out of you. You should have just said, You're, you know what? That's a good point. I need to go back and sit down and really think about what value I'm bringing to the table because that's a perspective that I hadn't thought about. Because I think that's really what's going on. I don't think she has thought about that. I think he asked that question and she hasn't really had a chance to think about it. So she's now grasping for straws and saying nonsense. I really think that's what's going on and contradicting herself, making herself look crazy on a very big platform. So I would have just said, look, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. That's it. That's all I would have said because he's so aggressive. <laughs> like you don't want to give him more that he can use against you, you know? But anyways, that's crazy. That was crazy. That's the craziest thing I've seen this episode. Not being, don't tell me I'm being mean. I'm, well, I'm about to be mean. I get tired of you broads telling me I'm being mean because you cannot handle the goddamn truth. You called my show on a day that you ain't even supposed to. Dang, did he just call us frauds? Oh, rude. But he is mean. He's super mean, super mean. It's not about being able to handle the truth, okay? But it's like your delivery is so mean that it becomes not helpful. That's the problem. It's like, you're not really helping anyone but yourself because you, all you're doing is building your platform and your business because you know, human behavior is people are always looking for drama and, and just content that is intense emotionally. But the way he delivers information isn't helpful to anyone because he's so mean about it. You can call me abroad if you want to.
I don't care. And then he goes, what are we looking for? I'm like, we, what are you talking about? (laughs) So obviously he considers himself in that category of what women want and what they're looking for. But I'm just like, men, human beings are exactly that, right? Just, (sighs) anyways, you guys, this has been just the craziest interview. And I do feel like she's, She's a little, she's a little annoying because she doesn't listen very well. And she gets so uncomfortable. She starts looking at her phone, even though she knows she's not looking at anything. There's nothing on your phone. No one's texting you. No one's calling you, you know? So uh, yeah, yeah. 